So we looked at Jude 24 and 25 about the power and the providence and the preeminence of God. And this is, this is weighty stuff. This takes us into the deep end of theology, but also into the most heartwarming relational connection we have to God. Because it says now, to him who is able, his power. And we're directing a praise to God. And he is powerful to do whatever he wants to do what he wills, and he is able. He can do anything he wants, anytime he wants, and he is going to do what he says he will do. So he is able to keep you, and that really talks about the providence of God. This is God's active intention that he has already determined to do. He's going to keep you, to keep, to guard, to protect, and to bring you safe, safely home to heaven. And kept has been a big theme in Jude, as you know. And so we've, we've talked about that and just the idea of presenting us faultless, declaring us righteous in Christ, but then presenting us before himself, before the face of God, in the presence of God. This idea of an offering to God before the presence of his glory, before himself, when he will be revealed in all his glory. Uh, and, you know, we know that sometimes we'll stumble and fall in this Christian life. We are not perfect yet. And so ultimately... We are not going to stumble ultimately. We are not going to have the trajectory going downhill in the Christian life. We will continue to grow and to pro progress in holiness. And we will be able to stand in the presence of God only in the righteousness of Christ, only because of God's goodness. And we will do so with great joy, great rejoicing, great exaltation. And there's, there's an end times uh, meaning to this. And it's the idea of our joy the joy of God's chosen people when he is revealed at the end, when, when we're going to rejoice and be glad in his presence, and we're going to be leaping for joy at the return of Christ and be with him forever in eternity, and really points out his preeminence. And so that's why the last, the last verse is just all a huge, huge praise to God, to the only God, our Savior. You can't praise God too much. And he is our Savior. He's the only one who saves. And then it says, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, that's what, um, that's what the, the oldest manuscript says. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So to the only God, the Father, who is our Savior through the mediation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is one God, one mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ. The one Savior, the promised Savior, Jesus Christ. And it says, to him be glory. To him be majesty. Glory is weightiness. Glory is importance. Glory is who God is. And to accept and to acknowledge who he is and what he does at all points. And his majesty. That means his greatness. He is the king of kings and, and lord of lords. His dominion. That means his strength, his might. He is in charge of everything. He rules over all. And it kind of harkens back to Daniel 7 and the ancient of days. And the son of man being given dominion. And then it says to him be the authority, the power, the authority, the legitimate power to rule. He has the right to rule over all his creation. He has the right to rule over us. And, and apostates, false teachers, those who want to live in ungodly ways may trick you and deceive you and see if you could fall and the devil might try to trip you up. But God speaks authoritatively and everything is bound by his word. That's why when I say this is the inspired, inerrant, infallible, authoritative, conscience-binding, perfect, eternal word of God, I mean it. Because this says all these things will happen before all time and now and forever. Nothing is changing in the fixed plan of God. And that's why we see at the very end, amen, truly, amen. Uh, this closes a doxology. This, this sets the seal of confidence, attributing glory to God. To the, he's the one to whom glory belongs. And, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You need to know how glorious God is. And he deserves all of our praise and all of our exaltation. All, do we need to pour our hearts out to him all the time and say, Lord, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. I love it when Moses said, show me your glory, Lord. And God's like, you know, my glory will be passing by. You can't see me and live because I am holy. And now we have this hope. We will see him face to face one day, all because of him, all because of him, to his praise and glory. Lord, what a wonderful day that will be where we will see you in glory. And Lord, every true believer has this hope fixed. And because we have this hope fixed, 
it just causes us to want to praise you more and to live to the praise of your glory, to live pleasing to you. May we do that by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.